G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. This arrived in the mail just a few days ago and came from RC Timer. They've sent it to be reviewed. What is it? Well, Victory 230. It's the B Rotor and it's a plug and fly mini quad. Let's have a look inside. The nice bag, really nice bag actually, which is kind of a bonus. And that's what you get for your money. A mini quad, look at that. Um, now there is a, there are a few accessories in here as well, I think that RC Timer may have thrown in, which probably aren't part of the standard package. So let's just look at the mini quad itself. Now it comes in this really nice case and the case has a handle. See, handle. So this is, I, this is a real bonus. I like the fact that you not only get the quad, but you get some way of lugging it around because unless you uh, have some way of carrying them around, it's gonna be a bit of a pain in the backside. And this fits in the case with the props on, although the antenna obviously has to be put on afterwards if you had the antenna you couldn't close the case never mind um, I see lots of carbon I see something that looks quite narrow which is good because that means less air resistance I see tubular carbon uh, but let's take it out of the bag or out of the container and see what it looks like on the bench and here it is now immediately I get the impression this could be quite a fast mini quad because it has relatively low drag I mean it, it is quite thin in the if you look on the plan form that's looking from above it's quite a thin body and those arms there, although tubes are the draggiest shape, they are small enough that you're probably not going to get that much drag from them. Certainly a lot less than the big flat paddle arms that a lot of other mini quads have when they just have them cut out of carbon fibre sheet. And the motors are 22, I don't know what they are, but they are obviously something I haven't seen before. They call them race, uh, racer edition. Um, I'll have to look into that, uh, see how well they work. Got some 5x45 five five bullnose props on. You notice that it's... Um, rocking on the table here so my table's pretty flat so obviously there's a little bit of something going on there don't know what that is maybe something's not on quite straight but never mind um, let's take a closer look at the bits and pieces maybe this platform up here um, now one thing that struck me about this was hmm looking underneath now let's look at some of the negatives first look at that camera that camera is so exposed and if I put this on an angle, you know, if, you, if you're coming in really fast, you can see that if the ground gets in the way, the first thing to hit is going to be that camera, and it's going to get a real bollocking, especially considering that it's only held on by these rubber bungs, so it will get ripped right off, that'll get ripped, this whole platform will get ripped right off, and the wires will pull out, maybe they'll pull out nicely and take the connector, maybe they'll rip out of the connector, I don't know, so that seems to be not a well thought out part of this quad. Um, it's too vulnerable and you really you don't need your FPV camera on a rubber mounting FPV cameras should be CCD because they give a bit of light handling and therefore they don't suffer from jello and you don't need this the platform solely for your Mobius or your GoPro you shouldn't have to put a uh, in fact thinking of that let's get a GoPro form camera here should have something laying around hmm obviously you're not going to be putting a GoPro on this thing because the props get in the way uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where you put it on that platform, the props are going to hit it. So it's Mobius Run Cam or um, Foxy Legend 1 type platform, not a GoPro platform, okay? So something to consider if you, if you must have a GoPro, this probably isn't the quad for you. Now, looking a bit further, uh, this has got kind of a box section. That's good. Everything is protected inside this rigid box. But one thing I noticed underneath, if we look carefully, try and get the light right, see these little dots, these little holes? They are what we call vias. That's actually a hole in the circuit board which allows you to connect the top of the board to the bottom of the board for the purposes of passing electrical current. Which means this is not carbon fibre, this is fibreglass. And even worse, this contains little circuit traces that are used to carry signals around the board. So if you have a really bad bang, this is actually a part of the stressed member of the frame. This could be broken or even worse, cracked. Because sometimes the copper will crack, the little copper tracks will crack without the board itself cracking. And then you don't know you know, it gets intermittent, something's intermittent happening, you don't know what's causing it, ah, oh, never, never use your PDB as a structural member of a mini quad or any quad because it's not designed, this board isn't designed to be structural, it's designed to carry electricity through the copper plating that's all the copper surfaces that are top and bottom, not designed to be subjected to large amounts of stress. So though we've got these carbon members here, which are all very nice, still got this as the bottom member of the frame, I'm not happy with that at all, uh, really is unfortunately now these are little plastic side panels you know they seem all right carbon on the top and it's uh, you know reasonably looks like it's I'll actually measure it I haven't checked to see that it's true carbon let's do that now you should be able to hear the beep when I touch my probes together so if I put on this side in the middle of the carbon layer and there we go so yeah it's genuine real real carbon it's not that 
carbon cladded fiberglass, so that's a big point in favour of this machine. Uh, but just structurally, I think, yeah, they just overlooked that uh, thing because the other thing is, if this is designed as a racing quad, there's a couple of other downsides to it. Now, this is all very nice and sleek, and to make it go, all you got to do is plug a battery in, plug a receiver in, and then set up the flight controller, which is currently running clean flight, I gather. It's an F3 flight controller, that's another bonus. F3, good flight controller, excellent. But if you're racing, there are a few things that quite often happen. You have a crash, and will you burn out an ESC, or break a motor, a motor shaft. These things are not so easy to sh change on here. There's, the ESCs are actually in the body of the quad, so changing an ESC is going to involve taking off the top plate. There's lots of screws holding these plates on, taking the top or the bottom plates off, and getting at those ESCs. So as a competitive racer, regardless of the performance, you've got to take factor that into the equation. Uh, a good competitive race, in fact, even if I go and find, where have I put it, even the Walkera, which, you know, a lot of people are a little derisive about the Walkera, but the F210 is not a bad little machine. Even the Walkera has these ESCs which have bullet connectors here and a plug on the circuit board there. So if you blow up an ESC in a race, you can quickly whip out that ESC, plug another one in, and you're away again. Yeah, it's kind of a, a good thing because you can't win a race if you can't fly because your quads bust. So something to consider there. Now, it comes with a... Uh, antenna. I didn't see any mention of whether this is left or right, so I'll have to break it apart and have a look. Oh, there we go. It's right. It's hand circularly polarised. Um, it's pretty similar to the immersion one. It's stamped out of... Oh, actually, it's pretty crap. I mean, oh, Chinese antennas, I'm still... It's still big as belief that... I mean, look at the... Hang on, I'll get a close-up of this. Okay, here's the antenna. Now, this petal, this this wire here, should be, should be straight, but as you can see, it's got a big kink in it. It's, it's, it's kinked, so this that severely compromises the ability to create a correctly circularly polarised wave from that antenna. So, uh, you know, it's just that little, that extra 2 or 3% that they could do to make a good product into a great product. Again, falling down on the job, these antennas. I'll try them out and see how well they perform, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. But as I said, the Walkera ones are even worse. So, you know, can't grizzle too much, I suppose. Now, just as an aside, because this came off so readily, I would I would suggest that you tape it on because it's not. It's only got a couple of little holes in there that hold the top onto the antenna. And if this comes off in a crash, then your antenna gets even more mangled than it comes from the factory. So, something to consider there. Just a little bit of tape around the edge, or you could use hot glue, but just a little bit of tape, even a piece of heat shrink that's about that size, you can shrink down. That'll make a huge difference. Okay, weight's very important with a racing mini quad. Let's see what weight this is. It is 300, oops, get my fingers out of the way, 384 grams. That's not too bad because the Walkera, if you remember, let's weigh that again, 408 grams. So it's definitely lighter than the Walkera. That's not a bad weight at all, actually. Um, I don't have anything else laying around at the moment to compare it to, but, yep, it's certainly light enough. And the Victory 230 does come with printed instructions. It's just one A4 sheet, but it does give you the basics. It tells you how to get started. You've got, obviously got to set up your... Uh, flight controller, which means installing the right software on your machine. Tells you about the basic sensors and how it's been set up. If you need to reflash anything, tells you how to do that. It's got other bits and pieces. Gives you also a map of the flight controller, which is in there. And as I say, it's an F3 flight controller. That's really good. See, it says F3 flight controller. Must be true. Um, yeah, and it tells you what all the pinouts are and so forth. There you go. I mean, that's, yeah, can't grizzle about that. It says it comes with 23, 2203. No, 2205, 2300 kV motors. Is that what it's got on here? Just have a look. I didn't actually check it out. What does it say? Yeah, 2205. So they're actually quite a decent sized motor. That means you may not be able to race in anything other than an open class, depending on how your multi-rotor racing leagues are set up. But yeah, I'll see how those motors perform. Just a tip, um, RC Timer did send me some other motors as well. So I'm going to be doing some reviews of these motors along with the motors that were sent to me by and I can tell you who they were sent to me by because I've got them sitting on my bench here waiting to be spun up um, from Epic RC. So we'll do those along at the same time. So there you go. So there it is, the Victory 230 which was sent in by RC Timer. That's on the bench. It's all looking pretty good as apart from this camera. Look, see? The camera's actually touching the touching the bench here. I can turn it on sideways. You can see it's touching the bench. So even just normal landings, if you've got a high camera angle, camera's going to take, start taking a bit of a pounding. That's probably the worst feature of this quad. But there you go, apart from that, I'm quite stoked. I'm really looking forward to giving this a thrash 
and seeing how well it flies because you can forgive some things if uh, other things are really good. So if you want to see the flight test, if you want to see how it performs in the air, just stay tuned, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you've got comments, questions, anything you want to say, stick them in the usual place. I'll do my best to address them in the meantime. Thanks for watching. Time for me to get back to the bench.